it's time to start a new repair project. If you watch my channel you may well recognise this. It's an ADM 3A dumb terminal. Um, this is not the one you've seen in the previous videos, this is a different one, this is one I actually own. And um, I picked this up a little while ago, it needs some work, uh, I don't know quite how much work yet. It obviously needs a very good clean. And um, what I'm going to do first, because I know it has been powered up, is I'm going to power it up and we'll see if we get anything on the screen. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but there's some very pronounced screen burn. I can actually read the writing. And it uh, looks like this was used as part of a CNC machine. And I suspect the only thing that was changing was some of the numbers. Um, but the uh, actual text is very badly burnt into the screen. Um, I may do something about that in the future if I can find a replacement tube, but uh, for now I just want to get this working and uh, see what we're up against. And um, okay, the brightness is turned full up, which might be a bad sign. Um, unfortunately, it's a 115 volt version, so um, I may rewind the transformer. Unfortunately, the transformers in these tend not to be tapped, they're wound to either 240 or 115 volts. Um, so I may rewind it in the future, but for now I'm just going to try and run it from a 115 volt transformer. So we'll get that plugged in. I've got this plugged into the uh, bench supply, so we'll get it powered up and see what happens. Okay, we'll get the ADM turned on. And it beat, so it looks like it might come to life really depends whether the tube is uh, any good or not and we're getting something on the screen very blurred cursor that may just be because the tube is very dirty and brightness control works okay it's not responding to key presses but that may be because of the duplex setting it might be uh, expecting to get the characters echoed back from the uh, remote end of the connection um, I'm not going to leave it on too long, I don't know quite what condition this is in. So uh, I'll get the camera repositioned and we'll open up the case. So looking inside, it doesn't look too bad, it's just uh, badly in need of a clean. Uh, it's nice to see that this plastic insert is actually still here, They're the first thing that normally go missing. Uh, the tube itself doesn't look too bad, as I said we've got uh, significant screen burn so it will need replacing at some point. The um, basically the monitor control board seems to be in quite good condition. There's no sign of any burning on that, so that's uh, quite nice. The main board looks to be mostly intact. We don't have the um, current option fitted to this. It looks like it's just serial, and the rest of it seems to be in fairly good condition. There's a couple of uh, memory option chips that aren't fitted, along with the option ROM. Unusual arrangement here with a sounder. I don't know if that's an official upgrade. So normally the speaker is plugged in to this connector. It does not appear that the connector was ever fitted to this board. So this might be a factory uh, option. Um, the board is absolutely filthy. It's absolutely caked in something that I probably don't want to know what it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the board out and I'm going to give it a really good clean and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll get the board out and we'll have a look underneath, see what we are up against. Okay, now the screws have long since gone, so I think this will just lift out, which indeed it will. Okay, and it doesn't look too bad at all. We've got some tape on the underside for some reason. But uh, other than that, it seems to be in fairly good condition. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, uh, even the vents are in place, so that's good. Uh, we can see here that the uh, incoming mains uh, transformer is riveted into the chassis, but I can easily drill those out and uh, replace them with bolts. The chassis itself seems to be in very good condition. It has got a speaker in that wasn't connected. I may well uh, change it back to use this speaker. Uh, all the 
posts and pillars are intact, nothing's broken off. So we've had the cable trapped here for a while but uh, hasn't pierced the insulation. And all the rest of it looks fine, the wiring to the monitor seems fine. Okay, that's good. It's uh, in extremely good uh, condition, just uh, badly in need of a clean. So what I'm going to do first is take the main board away, give this a really good clean. It is absolutely filthy and uh, we will go from there. So after a lot of cleaning, I ended up with a reasonably clean board. It still needs to be cleaned again. Um, I'm pretty sure this was used in a CNC environment and I think there was a lot of oil mist in the air. It was absolutely caked in kind of um, a combination of, I think, nicotine and uh, kind of grease and oil. And um, it has come up nice and clean. I don't know how well it works yet. And uh, we'll get back onto the board in a future video. Um, but for now, it has at least come up nice and clean. The keyboard has come up uh, quite nicely. The only key that seems to have had much use is the number one. So I'm assuming that um, this was just a starter process or something. Uh, but the rest of it looks to be in very good condition. We'll just have to do some thorough testing and see how much of it works. I will probably replace all three 5 volt regulators. They do tend to fail after a while, so I'll probably just replace those three. And um, as I say, we'll get back onto the board in a future video. So the next thing we need to turn our attention to is the chassis. Okay, well the case seems to be in reasonably good condition. It's got a few scuffs and scrapes on it, but um, there are no big chunks missing out of it. I will most likely remove this um, sticker, this uh, badge. It's uh, obviously an aftermarket thing, so I'll get rid of that, clean up the case. And um, the next thing is to get this uh, opened up. We'll get the tube taken out, separate the two halves, and then I'll strip the bottom part of the uh, case it's way too dirty to try and clean it all in one piece, so uh, I will completely dismantle this. So step one is to get the tube and its drive ball out of the way. And this is quite easy to remove, just a few screws, get the wire unclipped. We can then take the clamp out that holds the board in place. Okay, so that's that clamp out of the way. Let's grab the screw. Okay, so this releases the board. Just another clip down here. And the next thing is to remove the two clamps that hold the tube in place. There's just one at each side. Then I'll take the one off this side. Uh, I'll do this off camera, I don't want to try and reach around and pull this out. And uh, it's just I'm going to take this screw out and this whole thing will just lift out and I'll put it somewhere safe. And with that out of the way, I can now separate the two halves of the case. So it just pops apart. And we can now turn our attention to the chassis itself. So I'll get the speaker out of the way. So normally a little bracket holds this in place, but that seems to have disappeared. The speaker itself looks okay though. There's a clip of some sort down here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just take out um, all the uh, hardware, I'll take the transformer out. It is riveted in, so I'll drill it out. I can always pop rivet it back in, but more than likely I'll use uh, uh, nuts and bolts to hold that in place. And then I can uh, take this away, give it a really good clean, check for any more damage. It doesn't appear to be damaged. It seems like it's in uh, very good condition. A few scrapes and scratches on the bottom, but nothing serious. Okay, so I get this taken apart. We'll have a quick look at the individual parts and uh, see what the possibilities are of rewinding the transformer. Okay, that's the unit completely dismantled. I've taken all the parts I'm going to out of the chassis and um, it's looking in good condition. I didn't find any uh, cracks or breaks or pieces missing, so that's 
are looking very good and um, it should it should clean up quite nicely if it's anything like the PCB it might take a few attempts but I think it will come back nice and clean the top cover uh, again in good condition it's got a few scuffs on it here and there um, but it will need some of the uh, paint tidying up it's got a few uh, scrapes and scratches on it um, but again I think this will come up quite nicely uh, unfortunately the transformer does look to be the standard type I, although it looks like the primary wires go to the outside I've got a feeling they bridge underneath this uh, part here and actually it still has the primary on the inside um, I may well rewind this uh, probably do a, an entire uh, separate video on that uh, but um, I prefer to have this wound as a 240 volt unit rather than 115 and uh, they're not particularly difficult transformers to rewind it's just the pain having to uh, wind the uh, secondaries uh, when really all I want to do is replace the primary but uh, that's the way transformers do seem to be wound uh, so that'll be um, probably a day's work to do that uh, but the next step is to get this cleaned so in the next video in this series we'll see what um, additional work the chassis needs uh, once it's been cleaned up and then uh, we'll go on to the PCB see what uh, faults that has um, for initial testing I'll run it off the bench supply and uh, once we've got it fully operational then I'll decide what I'm going to do about the transformer <laughs>